I didn't use those. Test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hey, come on, hey, come on, hey, Bill. Yeah, the A4 going up. Okay. I don't know if you recall, did he ever get any time in any of the MiGs while you guys were VX4 or always the uh, adversary? Always the adversary, yeah. yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There was a very okay. small group of us, and we, we all know who we all are. Small club, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Small. When we use the spoken word, we would use A4 instead of uh, MiG-17. Oh, okay, okay. And if there was a MiG-21, we would have called it an F5. Because okay. they're again, performance-wise, you know, close enough. Mm-hmm. And and so you hear them at the end say, "Got an A4 going, whatever." I, if if that was out of Las Vegas, I would almost bet a dollar to a donut they were fighting MIGs. Any class, Bill inside. Ready, one zero, Roger, contact tower. We have a service terminated. Squawk appropriate. Be a front tower today. Watching tower. Vandy ten is uh, ten miles southwest from landing. Vandy ten, report the initial runway two one. Wind two seven zero degrees at one zero. Altimeter. I don't have much from VX4 because that whole time with the MIGs, we were, um, Mm -hmm. you know, you don't take pictures of secrets. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do have, maybe you have the same thing, though. I have a nice photo album of VX4 airplanes. Do you have your dad's? I don't. Um, All I have, I've got back here on the shelf, the Bicentennial F4. Yeah, yeah. From 76. I don't have a picture of it up here, but I've got a smaller one, the, the black bunny. That's the one I've got. I've got okay, that, I've got that one. That, I, I, uh, I, see now, I see now that the one that Gary and I would have flown is not around anymore. I don't know what happened to it, but there was a, a subsequent one, and that's being restored and going to go to, I think, Castle Air Force Museum. That's the A-4 your dad and I flew. Okay. That's the very airplane right there. Wow. There's Vandy one again. Yep. And seventy bandy seventy six. I yeah. always like that. That's it wasn't a great. A, it wasn't a great airplane. It was a great paint job, though. Yes. I'll tell you. Yeah, great paint job. We had several good long chats. At that time, I was still sort of committed to staying in the Navy, so I was trying to keep him on active duty. He was too good a guy to lose. Um, we both shared a desire to work in the flight test community. And Duck was, uh, you know, grew up there in, in St. Louis and confided to me all the time. What he, he, One thing he wanted to do more than anything was be a test pilot for McDonnell Douglas. He got out of the Navy in November of, of 76, so exactly eight years almost to the day that he joined. He wasn't fond of the military. Uh, he, I don't think he ever saw himself being in the military, but graduate from college, the deferment stopped. He got a draft notice. Um, he said, I, you know, I'll, I'll be damned if I'm gonna go you know, no offense to anyone, but, yeah. you know, f- be a grunt in the jungle, right? I, I sure. love, I want to fly airplanes. I'm an engineer. I feel like I'm qualified. And that sure sounds, sounds like a hell of a lot more fun. Uh, and so he it did. He, he talked to a Navy recruiter and, uh, of course, the, the, the rest is history. He soon got on at Mac Air as an aeronautical engineer working on the F-18, and we moved back to St. Louis. And uh... So he did the first, ooh, I want to say, you know better than I do, but I'm guessing maybe his first almost two years at McDonnell Douglas was working in system safety. Mm-hmm. So you were you were coming back to St. Louis to McDonnell Douglas. So he's working on the Mac side. You're coming in from the Navy side. And whenever I was there, at least one night, We'd get together. Generally, your, your folks would have over, over for dinner, and uh, Duck and I would uh, we'd drain a few together, and we'd get real smart. Uh, <laughs> your, your poor your poor mom at some point in the evening, she just got sick of fighter pilots, so, and <laughs> she would just toddle off to bed, and the, and the two of us re- relive old times. <laughs> yeah. We had a good time. Oh, Gary, I saw Gary quite a bit actually. So. From seventy uh, six. Through about 79, there are no flights with Mac Air with the exception of one. He had one October 11th, 1977, 1.2 hours, and a, uh, a TF-15, and the note says Krings, which uh, Jack Krings was the, the chief test pilot there. So that must have been some sort of initiation flight or orientation. And like you say, maybe feeling him out. Like, does this guy have what it takes, right? 
I view that as being kind of an initiation or a, you know, let's see, let's see what the cut of this guy's jib really is, whether we yeah. want to want him or not. Sounds like he was pretty ecstatic when he got offered the production test pilot job. And I will remember him. He called me when he when he got uh, picked up for production test pilot, and he was genuinely, absolutely, as the Brits would say, chuffed. He was so happy. Yeah. And I was happy for him, too. He sat Brent and I down, and he said, Would you rather see Dad go straight up in an F-15 or fly uh, his Ozark Airlines at the time, if you can believe that, yeah. or fly, oh, yeah. uh, fly those big commercial planes for Ozark Airlines? And, of course, Brent and I looked at each other and said, Wow, oh, straight up in an F-15. And yeah. I think that's the answer he wanted to hear because he kind of shook his head. I'm sure I'm sure he just wanted you to reinforce what he was already thinking. <laughs> I think so, yeah. I've... I know this will shock you. I was in the bar with uh, a couple of people. And we were doing some projects at the same place where Lockheed was uh, doing some other stuff. And being a typical complaining sailor, this was, oh, gee, very early, very early 1979. I said, you know, I think I'll quit. And the chief test pilot, then the chief test pilot, the skunk work said, uh, well, said, if you if you're, if you're want to resign, I'll hire you. Boy, I did, for a test pilot to go to work for the Skunk oh, yeah. Works, you know, it was so I put in a letter. I, I wanted to stay in. I put in a letter of resignation, though, just to keep him from giving me orders to someplace I didn't want to go. And uh, as usual, our little frail flower little fighter pilot egos get offended easily. And nobody ever answered it. So I, I told Lockheed, you bet. I'm I'll be coming. Got hired right straight into the F-117 program. But I was responsible for the third uh, F-117 to fly. Mm -hmm. The first two had uh, what we call flight test instrumentation. And they weren't representative. The third airplane, which was mine, was the first fleet configured airplane with all the, the goodies and mm -hmm. systems and stuff like that in it. So that was, it was really exciting. And you can't tell even your, your wife what you're doing, right? You're in a black program with paperwork over the top of you, right? <laughs> yeah. I would leave for work Monday and come home Friday. Mm -hmm. And she had an 800 number to call if things turned brown. Uh, we did have, it was interesting. I don't know how they did it. I'm not a telecommunications expert, but we had telephones that you could call out and they couldn't be traced back in. So you know, we were able to keep the, keep the family communication stuff going. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it, it was tough on family. Tough on family. How are you feeling at this point on top of the world? Pretty full of myself, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it was, it was absolutely wonderful. I, I love going to work there. I want to say this is the late nineties and I'm sitting at home watching the discovery channel. <laughs> They show some footage. Uh, it looked like you were having pitch trouble real close to the ground, right? And then they say Tom pilot Tom Morganfeld was on hurt. And then there was a little bit of clip and a little bit of an interview with you. And I'm sitting there going, I yeah. know that guy. Like, he's in this picture right here, the camping picture, right? Um, <laughs> do you mind talking a little bit about that? And, and what's going through your mind at that point is the test pilot. Like, hey, I got a problem here. Well, um, worst six seconds of my life. Mm. To be honest, you, you can yeah. guess. It. The airplane up to that point had been a very gentle bear, especially in a landing pattern. And strangely enough, what I was doing was uh, we've been up doing some flutter points and whatever, and the instrumentation broke. So I had just come off the tanker and I had to get rid of some gas to get down to landing weight. And they had the publicity photographers there. <laughs> that's what, <laughs> Always. I, I could have crashed in silence if it hadn't been for them. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> I let the afterburner. Boy, all hell broke loose there. I got almost a full negative G pitch over at really low altitude. So I did what I guarantee you anybody's going to do. You pull back on the stick, mm -hmm. you know. And so I'm thinking I'm in a great big strong 9G airplane, big flat bottom. I had always always made up my mind, unless it was really dire, I wasn't going to eject close to the ground. I've had a lot of experience with other people hurting mm -hmm. themselves mm -hmm. badly ejecting close to the ground. So that's why I just wrote it in. It, it hurt badly. Uh, mm. I, my ego, my mm. pride, and my back. So mm. yeah, it, was, it was not good. And then af at that point, Fergie uh, graciously stepped aside. He became the director, was the director of flying ops. And 
uh, let me be the chief test pilot of the Skunk Works. And then when Fergie retired, I, I fleeted up. We had this yeah. very nice apprenticeship thing going. Sure. You're sitting there on, on, the, on the runway and they give you the clearance to take off. Are, yeah. you, are you nervous or at that point, does all your training kick in and you, you've got a mission to execute and you just you put everything else out of your head? Well, both, both. You know, you, you, you definitely have the willies. Not, never, ever felt angst for my own personal safety. But, boy, you just don't want to screw up in front of all those people. You, 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 know, you want everything to come out well. And you've been training for this for your whole career. Uh, it, it's extremely exhilarating, for sure. Yeah. Oh. For the same reason I, I mentioned before, uh, you don't want to fumble the golden football. We work real hard with these airplanes to find to make sure there are no single point failures that can cause us problems. Mm -hmm. And of course, you are as a pilot, you are a single point <laughs> failure, uh, <laughs> and a, you know, a possible single point failure. And so, I, I, if I felt any pressure, it was to perform well for the hundreds and hundreds of people that put all their time in designing and building the airplane you know? sure. it was it was definitely uh, the thrill of a lifetime for me mm -hmm. for sure remember so, how many uh, flights or hours total you got in the plane about 80 okay. yeah i flew all three versions and and uh, yeah it was it was a good time lovely airplane lovely lovely airplane to fly are you still flying now do you you said you uh, got a ga plane you were flying a mooney for a while if i remember still have it still have it i commuted to work in the mooney for like 12 years or so. So you would you would fly a Mooney to the Skunk Works and then hop in an F-117. That's... The <laughs> well, well, yeah. 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 Here's, here's a... It, it's interesting. It's, it's just an exaggeration, way. but it's, no. it's, it's a great story. It's just... That's amazing. <laughs> well, the thing... This is, this is interesting because when we were flying out of Edwards, flying a, the F-22, YF-22, and flying out of Edwards, very easy. The way the rules are, the base commander can grant you permission to land at the at the base, provided you have some reason to be there. If you're a retiree like I was, just using the commissary or the or the exchange is is enough. Uh, we get you got to show that you got the proper amount of insurance and you pass the course rules exam and and we parked down where they had an aero club out there, the light airplanes at Edwards. So going to Edwards was wonderful. <laughs> I I fly in there every morning, just lovely, hmm. and. And when we moved out, moved the um, F-117s down to Palmdale, Palmdale is not an Air Force base. It's an Air Force plant. Hmm. So therefore, the base CO, it comes under a different honor among you-know-whats. And uh, the base CO cannot authorize you to land there on a regular basis unless it's part of the contract. So hmm. he flying the Mooney to work on the F-117 program at Palmdale, that's not in the contract. <laughs> and in fact, the, the base CO, the CO of our flight test squadron, all the Air Force people were lined up. I could have parked it around 20 feet from my desk, literally. Wow. And they went, instead of asking the local on-scene commander, evaluating the thing and saying, yes or no, you got your insurance, whatever else. It had to go back to Washington. And you never ask permission from somebody that far away because yeah. they would never, ever allow me to do that. So I would, have, I would just fly into Fox Field, which was the local GA airport, okay. and drive, drive 10 miles to work. It, it added a fair bit to it, but I still love the fly yeah. Yeah. I feel like my life's complete now, and I certainly, I get it. Like every time I get in that cockpit, I know, I know how he felt. I know he was thinking the excitement, the anticipation of just... You, know, you can start that engine up and put that seatbelt on, and and you're literally you're strapping into a set of wings, and away you go, right? So, yep. Yep. So, look, Tom, it's been great catching up with you. I appreciate your time right. today no and uh, all sharing your stories and your memories of my dad. It's great, and it helps me so much understand again what what I'm seeing on the screen, what he's thinking, what he's feeling, and I appreciate you sharing those stories with me and your time today. Thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Feel feel like I owe Gary something or other. I, <laughs> good, good friend, gone too soon. Oh.